We are very excited to welcome to The Kelly Alexander Show, a Canadian recording artist who's doing amazingly well. She's just released her latest album, Little Machines, and she is here to hang out with us. Lights, hello, my sweet. Hello, how are you doing again? I'm good. I'm it's so, been a while. I know. I'm so happy to have you back here. Since uh, we spoke the last time, uh, you have had a child. A lot you has have happened. gotten married. <laughs> it's like I don't even know what's going on. I know. So Me too. my first question, I think, would be... Um, did, did marriage change things like with you just even as a recording artist like were you expecting to be married before 30 like I you know it I feel like it comes when you're not expecting it because at the time that I met him I was just not wanting a relationship at all and then it comes and you're like all right I don't even care I'll get married who cares and I think the one thing that probably changed the most for me was um you fall in love for the first time I mean for me that 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 was the first time and um Siberia is kind of all about that, the last record, all about falling in love. But now that I'm married, you can't really write about falling in love for the first time or like someone breaking your heart or something like that, you know? So that would be the main point of change. Like, what do I write about now? <laughs> My heart isn't getting broken. I'm not, you know, uh, out searching for love. I'm not lonely. I'm not um, this or that. So it's like you find new content. And with this record, it was all about kind of going back to nostalgia and feeling young again and rediscovering your passion for life and music and that kind of thing that's actually amazing that you would speak about that getting married you can't really write about the lonely times no, anymore unless I you know. really want to bring it back to I know. Back and in then the it's just kind of dishonest because I never like to write something that feels like not me you know you just that would be for someone else if you're writing from your heart you're gonna write about things you're experiencing now I know that when you write like I feel like you're a, a very self-aware person and self-aware of, of the world around you do you find that your lyrics are really like quote-unquote deep or do you try to, to sort of be um, easy for your fans to pick up on your message if I can say it like that you gotta try to do a bit of both I think y I think it's important to dig a little and and sort of exercise the your emotional tension because that's what music and art is all about. I think it's very cathartic um, and it's healthy and it's important to, to speak on issues that you're dealing with because I think a lot of people are going through the same things. But at the same time, you can't write so it goes over people's heads or you can't write about a specific thing because then it's only applicable to you and no one else. Um, like don't give dates, you know, and like <laughs> numbers. But um, yeah, there's sort of this art, this poetic quality to trying to make something deep but still accessible, and I think it's fun and challenging. Now, having Baby Rocket, which I just think is the coolest <laughs> name ever, her and Pharrell, they've got the amazing children I named know, Rocket. I know, it's so great. I didn't know that before I named Rocket. Sorry, <laughs> Pharrell. Uh, has, has motherhood changed you, like, with regards to writing, and even how you prioritize your career now, because you do have this little munchkin that needs mommy? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think... I cut the fat a little bit with the things that I stress out over. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more, I'm more chilled out than I ever was. I think, which is kind of ironic because you you think that going to motherhood everything gets crazy, but um, it, it forces me to level every few hours. You know, you have to sit down even if it's a crazy day. You have to sit down and feed her, mm -hmm. and you breathe. And before a stage, you, you sit down and you just look at her, and it just reminds you that why are you what, what what was all the things you worried about before they don't matter you know nothing matters i wanted to ask you this because my parents have told me this before that when you become a parent because i'm not a parent yet um that you sort of envision what your kid's life is going to be and i think you're a very free person have you already started to do that with rocket like maybe this is what she's going to do maybe she'll be an artist like mommy and daddy like has that started to cross your mind at all yeah i mean i, I think about it sometimes but i remind myself that I'm open to her being anything she wants. Um, she's being raised as a, like a tour baby, right? She's being raised around music. Literally part of her makeup is Little Machines, the new album. Like she was raised on it. Um, but I think part of me is kind of like, you never want to do what your parents do. You're like, she, will she want tattoos? Probably not. Her parents have it. It's uncool. You know, so I, it, you know, if she doesn't go into music, it's like, do whatever you want. She'll probably be the opposite of me. Maybe want to be an accountant or something. <laughs> Which is very good. Pay the rent. <laughs> Everyone needs accountants. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to us about Little Machines. Um, was it a long process in, in coming to it? Because I'd read that you had a bit of a, I don't even like to say this, but writer's block. Yeah, no, I did. Okay. Um, a part of it was that sort of rediscovery about content. Like, what do you want to write about? I don't, I'm not lonely anymore. I'm, I'm pretty happy in life. That's kind of artistic bane, isn't yeah. it? Just being <laughs> pretty be happy. happy where you are. Um, that probably kind of started it, you know, trying to think about something cool to write about. And then um, as time went on, I, I, I'd been touring for a long time and hadn't written, hadn't exercised the muscle, so I was out of practice, which was a, I've, I've learned from my mistakes and now I'll always keep writing. And I felt time as sort of pressure. And some of the songs are written about that. Um, it was three years 
between albums Mm -hmm. now that little machines out and that's a long time business wise but you can't let those things affect you and they do though and and you feel the sort of time pressure and you feel the pressure you apply on yourself um in terms of expectations from whether it's your label or your fans or yourself and it was all probably self-applied pressures but um that really bogged me down and uh, it really forced me to rediscover what I liked about music and what my purpose is in music because I can't write something with conviction if I don't think there's a purpose behind it Mm -hmm. um so it was good it ended up being amazing because I had to rediscover my creativity and rediscover my path and um, in that time I found out I was pregnant and that helped rediscover an entire new level of priorities and I was faced with sort of a crossroads and I thought you know do I keep doing music or do I stop and, and focus on being a parent? And in those moments, realize how much I love making music and how lucky I am to do it mm-hmm. and how much I love the fans and the touring and just everything, you know, creating something out of nothing and putting it out there and it affects people's lives. I think it's just so amazing. So I think in that, I feel like a new artist all over again. And um, I'm, I'm very, very much proud to be here. Up We Go is amazing. Thank and, you. You know, it's so it's so fun and up, and and it just makes you want to like rock out. Good, uh, which is That's what it's all about. <laughs> so when you when you were writing the song, did you feel like you were gonna have something special with that? Because certain songs, I just I you know, it's just it takes over you, and I feel like that's one of those songs. Really? And the video too. You know what that's I mean? That's awesome. It was funny. Um, that song came kind of funny. I I wrote it with Togs, uh, who I've been co-writing with for like ten years, and we kind of came up with the chorus, and and it was written in a time that I was telling myself that it's only up we go from here right you know like I've been feel like I've been this dry spell for so long all that can happen is it goes up right and and I wasn't convinced of it but I wrote it in the song because I wanted it to be true and um sat on the song for a while for like a month trying to slave through the lyrics it wasn't really flowing as easily as a lot of songs because I was in that place Mm -hmm. went back in the studio with him about a month later and just kind of slandered together and was like all right well yeah that's done you know I guess went back to my hotel that night and started to work on the next song and I couldn't get this other idea I had for Up We Go out of my head. And I'm, I was sitting in the tub and I remember standing up in the tub and just belting out the verses you hear now, you know? And and that's, suddenly it was ca- this captivating inspiration moment. And I went in the studio the next day and I said, this is, this is how the song's gonna be. And everyone heard it, everyone flipped out and it was like, this is gonna be the single. You know, it, it did what it was supposed to do and did what the song is about, you know? Now, I would say that you are definitely one of, of Canada's elite female artists. Oh, I my goodness. That. That's, that's huge because, I mean, there's a lot of great Well, there are a lot, but I feel like, you know, you've been around for a while. And, uh, you know, I wonder, do you find that the scene is, is supportive of each other, especially, like, on the female side? And do you have up-and-comers now going, hey, Lights, like, what do I do? How does this roll? Yeah, I think the, the Canadian music scene's pretty small, all things considered. I mean... I've even had the opportunity to shake hands with Joni Mitchell, who is, I think, my my biggest Canadian musical female hero. Um, but it's it, it is a very supportive community. I don't I don't know if it's you know coming down to giving people advice and that kind of thing. I wouldn't put myself in that position yet. But I mean, just the other day we played We Day, and um, my husband and I were standing side stage before we went on in front of like this really cool crowd of kids that are trying to make a change. You know, twenty thousand kids, and my baby's right there. You know, we have her in, in my hands about to go up. And Nelly Furtado came off stage and came up, and she's like, "Parenting on the road, I know how it is. You know, just having a chat." And I think it's those kind of things that make it the Canadian music world and you know that's awesome now gelling. you are traveling all over the world you're traveling across Canada then you're going to the states as well in between there and then you're heading overseas do you notice a difference between your fans over in Canada like is it more important for you because you're here to tour here or is it important to you to just do it up I think it's important to take it everywhere take it as far as you can I think that was the sort of the goal I set for myself when I first started was like, let's reach as many people as possible with music that makes you makes you happy you know music that takes you out of it for a few minutes that's the point of music um and the fan bases in the states aren't aren't that different. I mean, okay. here they might be a little bit more broad because there is support on radio, mm-hmm. which is so rad. And I think it, it exposes you to people that wouldn't normally, you know, search the internet for you. Whereas in the States, it doesn't get as much radio support. So it's all people that have discovered you through word of mouth or through internet or, um, you know, whatever, wherever they may have seen it. And, and so that's sort of maybe more of a college age demographic and here it's very broad and I think it's just cool it's just different slightly different vibes but ultimately 
it's cool. The last time you and I spoke, social media really hadn't hit yet. So that's going back a few years. Yeah. Um, so you were obviously out doing your thing. I don't think I had Instagram then. Probably not. <laughs> probably not. How important is um, social media, you hearing from your fans? Does it make your day? You know, to say like someone's like, your song, it moves me, like whatever totally. it is. Absolutely. Kay. It's so important. I think on that level, you know, hearing how it's moved people and how it resonates with people and people that have resisted suicide because of it. I think that's insane um, it drives it just makes me feel like it's so worth it you know at the end of the day um, but one of the cool things about it is you, you get a sense of what songs people like live for example which ones they want to hear and that that affects your set your tour set where you're gonna play at the shows um, that affects if I'm gonna do an acoustic version of something or what people are gonna hear it's just cool you get like direct feedback from the people that are buying the record so I think it's just an amazing tool before I let you go, I have to ask you about this. Yeah. Because I love symbols. I'm a Rhythm Nation Janet yeah. Jackson girl. You got to represent. And so, but you told me this is this is like from a passion of yours. So explain yeah. this and what it means for your fans. Well, um, I, I'm a fan of um, anime and, and like a lot of nerdisms. And I think one of the cool things about the sort of, I guess, quote unquote, nerdy community is that you're able to represent what you're into subtly so that the other people that are into that thing recognize it but no one else does because it doesn't have the name on it mm -hmm. you know so one of the one example is i'm into a, an anime called bleach okay. um or a manga called bleach and uh, i'll wear a bleach patch you know with with ichigo kurosaki on it or something and the innocent bystander won't know what it is but a bleach fan will and so it connects you and i wanted uh something that represented all things lights so that other people that recognize it will be able to bro down when they see it and it's something i can wear too because it doesn't say my name on it i feel lame wearing my own merch <laughs> but this is like this is not the same this is like lights army right here lights army that is so cool thank you so much for hanging out with us of on course the show. thank you this is my girl oh lights. yeah it's always so nice to see you man. hanging out on the kelly alexander show and again check her out on her website music.imlights.com